Let's begin. Oh, hang on. Is my, is my mic working? Oh yeah, it's working. No mind. I think it's working. Yeah, <clears throat> cool. <laughs> uh, happy, let me get this right, Thursday to everybody. Praise be this far. I should know this. I should know this because it is Jekonoid night tonight. Uh, I haven't done it for two weeks, so we'll do the usual where I spend the first half an hour digging around in the code trying to remember what the hell I did last time. I've actually upgraded my keyboard to this thing that... Oh, God damn it, you can't see because of the thing. There you go. Uh, so it's... Uh, this is a Durgod um, K320 um, with cherry white keys. So I've gone for a slightly different uh, key cap to what I normally do. I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to try out a few various types of keyboards. Uh, different key types uh, until I find the ones that I feel most comfortable with and then get a custom keyboard built uh, built with it. The only thing I've got a problem with this keyboard is that some of the keys click and some of them click less. They they sound all very different. So I, I believe the click or the lack of click is due to the lubrication on the keys on here. So uh, it might need kind of taken apart and lubricating so that it's consistent throughout the keyboard because it's a bit weird how some some are clickier than others uh, but i've checked them they're all white so they're all white keys but but it's a very nice keyboard very nice build uh it's quite nice it's uh yeah yeah Dur a durgod taurus k320 in in like a space gray with some some orange keys on there as well uh <laughs> Yeah, I'm to stick to the loop. Um, move on the keys. Oh, no, it's inside. It's inside the the key stems. So, um, Space Gray, copyright Apple. Space Gray's been around for years since that, before Apple. I'm not even sure what they mean by Space Gray, because Space isn't gray, it's black, right? So... They mean rocket ship colors or something. I don't know. But it seems like a nice keyboard. It's got function keys on it, which is good. Uh, it is a bit bigger than my other one because my other one was uh, my other one was the... Um, it was an Epo Maker, actually, the one that had 61 key version. Um, but this one is uh, has a function key row uh, that the other one didn't have, and it has the insert home page up uh, keys that the other one didn't have as well. So I thought I'd try this one out, get to see if I like uh, cherry whites uh, and this profile. It's an OEM profile as well, so it's slightly concave, which the other one wasn't. Uh, so I'm hoping it's a little bit more. Um... Oh yeah, hey Sean, I'll show you. Show you Sean, it's a. Uh... Oh, there you go. It's a Der, Der God uh, Taurus K320. Um, it's it's uh, it's fairly it's fairly nice. It's a uh, it's a relatively cheap brand um, in in the world of mechanical keyboards anyway. Um, but it's um, it's definitely good build quality. The the, the keyboard itself feels very sturdy, um, very solid. I mean, it's all plastic, but the the plastic case feels very very solid. Very good. Uh, very good quality. Let me type the name in so you can you can check it out. So it's a Der God uh, Taurus K320. Uh, I have no idea, Sean. It's uh, as I say, it's only a, it's only a fairly relatively cheap brand for what you get, um, but it is good quality. But like I was saying, I think the keys need um, the, the 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 switches need lubing because some of them are clickier than others. So I think it's probably been sat in storage for a while. Um, and some of them have dried up a little bit or something. I'm not sure, but they, they definitely seem a little bit different all over. But I can't be bothered lubing it, so it's just going to stay as it is. Uh, it's too too much work for me. All right, so let me add points to you all. Um, so I was doing some... Um, and start the quiz as well. I was doing some quiz, uh, some uh, some code today. Um, it's like, yeah, that's what I thought. So it's just, it just does definitely feels some of the clickier than others. So the cherry whites, so um, they should be, they should be pretty clicky. 
Um, I mean, you're not going to be able to hear it even if I put my mic down to it. Let me just do this. I don't think you're going to hear them. Fortunately, the noise cancelling is going to, it's going to cancel them out, but not to worry. Um, let me start the races. There we go. Um, so yeah, I, I was, uh, I was going to do a bit of code today. Actually, I did do a bit of code today and I went to copy the files. So I, I did this, right? I opened up, I need to be very careful. I opened up a folder in, um, in sublime and I right clicked on a file and I want, I wanted to click on open containing folder. Uh, and what I'd done is I'd selected a couple of files like this, and I right clicked and instead of pressing open container containing folder, I missed and hit delete file. Uh, and it deleted my code files and I couldn't undo, I couldn't undo and get them back. So, um, really annoying. Uh, I tried everything I could because it was on a network drive as well. I couldn't use the, the normal undelete stuff. Um, so I lost the DMA code from, from Tuesday. Uh, which is annoying because I was just about to uh, to to commit it as well to a uh, source control, so I I yeah it was a bit a bit annoying. Uh, so it was a bit sad, but um, I went back and um, kind of re recreated a a, a DNA thing. So um, yeah, I I could have you there is a there is a similar feature on um, network drives actually that has. Um, uh, like re restore thing but you have to dedicate a certain amount of space to it uh, and i haven't been, I, I didn't do that from the off because i don't really care too much about what's on there so um you got that right the quiz is bugged what did you type the quiz is not bugged so uh it said adamus What was the what was the answer? Well, we'll see, we'll see on the next one. I, it shouldn't be bugged. There shouldn't be. I haven't made any changes to it. So, um, um, uh, I I don't know. I don't know, and I'm not going to worry about the quiz. I'm. I'm, um, I spend far too long dealing with kind of secondary support <laughs> than doing stuff. And, and if, if it's something I can do, I can deal with immediately, then I will, but I, I, I can't do anything about it with the quiz other than to check, um, the, the, the values in, in the quiz thing. So, uh, uh, no, you're not getting AMK points for it. <laughs> no way. So I'm drinking some vodka tonight. Um, oh, it came with this. Came with this nice little uh, cup coaster as well. I mean, it's pointless, but it came with it anyway. It's not a bad little keyboard. I, I like it, and I, I'm I'm definitely typing better on this keyboard. I think because it's so tactile, um, and because I type more than I game, I think it's probably better for me to have tactile keys. As much as I like the blacks. Um, on on the other keyboard i think the whites are probably uh kind of preferable because of the tactile feedback on them so all right let's take a look at um checkanoid then and see where we're at because i don't remember at all let's make the code a bit bigger uh the nicest thing about this is i've actually got function keys again so oh jesus christ There we go. So from what I remember, most of this is working quite well now. Um, the collision was working good. 
I think the sprite multiplex was pretty spot on as well. Um, the laser's a bit slow, um, but I think we can shoot the door now to open as well, which we can. We do need new characters, but Andy will supply them at some point. Um, I think we've done the, the stars up here, haven't we? That was one of the last things we did. And they do look a bit better now, actually, than they did do previously. They look a bit more... I mean, you can still see a pattern in them, but they're 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 a bit faster, so they seem less less kind of um, repetitive, even though they are. Okay, this laser looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any glitches in it. I think there were some glitches in it previously. Um, this seems to be okay as well. I'll go into the middle of it yet? Yeah. yeah, I think I think we're in a pretty decent state actually. So there's a few things we can do. We can uh, we can look at some additional things like these turrets here, which need to be done. Um, we can look at uh, this this area here, which needs a special type of masking. I think it's just a little bit too uh, too thin to mask this properly. Um, so we could do this this kind of masking as well. There's the triple mines. There's these as well, which need doing, which I guess is probably the most sensible thing to do next. Although we do need the new version of this, um, so maybe not. Uh, again, here, uh, this masking needs to be uh, a different masking type, and obviously all the uh, collision objects need to be put into these screens because they're the uh, destructibles because they're not at the moment um yeah so these these areas here are i like the the masks that we had before but they're slightly different in that the mask needs to reduce in size for these so i think maybe we'll we'll go and do that i think there's only vertical things so we'll 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 do that let's start on let's start on this screen and use this screen as the, as the basis so let's start on screen 23 Uh, and depending if I feel all right later on, I'll put, might play a little bit of uh, Resident Evil as well. I'll try and w work our way through that game. It'd be really good if we could get um, that complete by the end of this weekend. Um, the thing is, I don't remember how big that game is. It's uh, uh, I remember it being very... Um, in fact, I'm not sure. Did I ever complete? I don't even remember if I ever completed the first one. It's been so long since I played it. It's been like ten percent through. Is that it? Really? Wow. Okay. Wow. All right. Yeah. Then then maybe not. No. No. We're playing the original games now. We're working our way through um, from the from uh, Resident Evil One. We're going to work our way through the entire game collection uh we're going to play all the numbered versions of the game um plus a, a handful of the the other ones so if you go on the um if you go on the wikipedia page for resident evil you'll see a list of all the games and there's a couple of them in bold we're going to play all the ones in bold so that will be all the numbered all the numbered games all the remakes as well because there's a remake of one and two um uh we'll be playing uh I think the only other one that's not one of the numbered is Codename Veronica, which is kind of Resident Evil 3, but not Resident Evil 3. It's sorry you took that. Um, okay. Remake 2 and 3. Oh, there's a remake of the first one as well. I think it's on the GameCube, I think. Um so so there's actually three FIFA series playthrough. Oh my god, can you imagine? <laughs> I'd be the dullest. Actually, do, do you know what? I I wouldn't mind playing one game on every version of FIFA. That that would be kind of interesting. Because I remember the original FIFA's on the Mega Drive, I think it was. And I I absolutely loved it on them on the Mega Drive. It was amazing. Uh and then I played it a lot on the uh Nintendo 64 as well. Uh, and then after that, it kind of lost its charm. It just became more of the same, more of the same. It, it wasn't really, um, it didn't really, and it still doesn't. It's, I think it's kind of one of those studios where where they, 
they're just reskinning it every year. They're not really doing anything, um, anything special. So uh, it's just a huge money grab every year. Um, it's it's the sports game equivalent of COD. I was reading the um, the Battlefield twenty forty two uh, comments in some of the videos. It's so hilarious hearing all the Call of Duty people go on about it. It's just like they just don't get it at all. Uh, yeah, twenty forty two looks absolutely amazing. I cannot wait for it. It looks like it's a cross between Battlefield three and Battlefield twenty one forty two. It looks incredible. Really, really, really good. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Expect a lot of streams when that comes out where I'll be just playing that. Uh, because it, it just looks brilliant. So, COD was good up till COD 4. COD 1 and 2 were, were, were good. COD 2 especially I thought was very good. Uh, COD 3 I don't think I ever played, so I would have to go back and play that. But I really enjoyed the first Modern Warfare. The first Modern Warfare was my first real um, feeling that the that, that multiplayer first-person shoes were going to be like a massive deal. Not just like, you know, Quake and, and you know, Counter-Strike had kind of done that already, but uh, Modern Warfare was the first time I thought, shit, this is this is big money, big, big money. And it was good. It was very, very good, good game. And then they they just ruined it after that. They just kept they just kept adding more and more ridiculous things to it. So, um, play Battlefield Five before joining here today. I do like my Battlefields. I need to go back and play some more, um, more uh, Battlefield. I've not played it for a while. Yeah, Team Fortress was good, but they ruined Team Fortress as well. Team Fortress was great as it was, and then they added all these stupid things to it um, that they shouldn't have done. Um, it was great as it was, and it, they they just ruined it. So, yeah, hats and stuff. Um, uh, Battlefield Two and Battlefield Twenty One Forty Two were my my two favorites. Um, after Battlefield three battlefield three and onwards it was it was more about the kind of super slick engine and stuff and it is very good but um um but yeah quake wars oh my god i knew somebody worked on that actually so it splash damage wasn't it who did quake wars yeah i know somebody who worked on the uh, map tech map kind of levels and they had the mega textures in for the first time i think it was quake wars yeah um okay right let's uh let's crack on with this so uh what we're going to do then is we're going to change the map uh starting point to, to screen 23 so i need to go find the player uh code which is here so i don't have to i've not got a pop-up window out for anymore that's good where's the player start screen brain's not in it at all at the moment i need to I need to get going on it so yeah what i was trying to do today um was where is the player start screen it's not, oh, maybe it's in the game the main yeah what i was trying to do today was do a mode 7 dma thing um so i was discussing in the discord a little bit uh it's so this one yeah okay so that's the original so i'll keep that uh, and I had it all worked out. I had everything planned out in my head. And the stumbling block I came across was the the fact that you can't you can't just do simple strips uh, in a single um, <laughs> BF two strike at Karkan. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, you you can do just simple strips. You have to you have to advance um, in, in the Y direction on the on the texture as well. So you can't really do rotating textures properly, um, or easily anyway. So um, so I've kind of put a request into it to add a very small feature to the DMA, um, but should allow us to rotate uh, textures and skew textures as well. But I had it all worked out, and it was it was drawing something to the screen um 
256 wide and 128 high, which I deemed enough to display uh, like a Mario Kart style racer with like a hood down the side. And it was doing that in maybe 30 raster lines or so. It was doing it very, very quickly. Um, and that was based on um, any uh, each line having its own step and, and, and position as well. So uh, it was using a DMA to create the DMA, if that makes any sense. Um, like an unrolled DMA chain, basically, that was created by another DMA. Um, yes, yeah, so Strikeit Karkand and Sharkai Peninsula are my two favorite maps on, on Battlefield 2. Strikeit Karkand because of the tanks. It was just a great tank map if you were if you were defending. Um, if you were attacking, it was, the, the, it was one of the maps where if you just threw a grenade at the right point at the beginning, you could get like six or seven kills immediately because of everybody hiding in a very spe specific spot. Uh, but it was a great tank map. Uh, and Sharkai Peninsula was a good helicopter map. And I didn't really like flying the helicopters, but I liked attacking the helicopters. Um, you probably did play against me, because I, I used to play a lot on that, that map. That was my favorite map. Um, so, yeah, maybe. I would have been called Shalan as well back then, probably. Okay, so uh, we're going to load screen 17 in. So let's just make sure that that works because I'm being a bit a bit um, off topic, aren't I? Um, did anyone play Cod United Offense? I don't think I did, actually. Uh, I couldn't tell you. I don't know which one that is. I don't know when that came out or anything. Uh, okay, cool. Oh, uh, okay. That's that's not cool. Let's start. Uh, let's start. Damn it! All right, that's fine. I'll just adjust our position slightly. Spawn X, spawn Y. Okay. Oh, okay. We've got these here. So I'm just going to, again, I'm going to duplicate these so I can re return uh, them back. Oh, God. Do you know what? I do miss some of these keys. It's definitely better with these, these additional keys. I tried. I tried really hard to work with a really, really tiny uh, keyboard, but give me a bit of Star Wars Battlefront. I, I didn't mind Star Wars Battlefront, but it just wasn't the same. It just didn't have. Um, the fun of the uh, uh, the fun of the uh, the, the, the battlefield series. It kind of lost some of it. Yeah, this one's ten kilos. Yeah. All right, let's get another vodka on the go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to enhance the masking system here. So what we want to do is we want to define an area that's passable. Uh, which we already do on the on the intro on the uh not the intro like the second screen or something um but this time what we want to do is we also want to define a width so there'll be a default value um when you when you call the function but if you if you set this width value it will it will actually when you generate it it will it will generate a a different width sprite for that uh, that area now i'm hoping that the the masking is the same on on every screen that has masking so here there's three areas with masks um uh, i'm i'm kind of hoping that it it works properly on this so what we'll what we'll have to do is we'll just have to we'll make the mask a red color so we can see it um and then I'm going to uh, try it on this screen. And then we'll go back and test other screens as well. So there's one here as well on this screen, which is a mask of 16 wide. This is a mask of 8 wide on this one. Um, and I'm hoping it's OK. Now, it might be easier just to create um, a different sprite for these. But let's have a look at the... Um, so look at the sprites is probably the easiest way of doing this actually rather than generate a new sprite each time because uh, we can load sprites in on the fly there's nothing stopping us from loading sprites on the fly if we need to so we can have common things like these masks loaded in all the time and just load in stuff that's um specific to uh, let's, let's test 
we can just load in stuff that's specific to uh, the, the the game uh, to the the screen if we need to. Okay, so I can't remember what that was about. I, don't, I made a little square sprite, but I can't remember for the life of me why I did that. Um, I think it was just some debug thing, wasn't it? But there's our mask sprite there. Uh, so I basically, what I need to do, I mean, if I'm just going to do it from here, so I'm just going to copy uh, that uh, and paste. Oh, it's alt V, isn't it? Like that. Okay. So I'm going to use these two sprites, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo kind of one one block of it. So, like so. Oops. This one. Uh, in fact, let's just copy that over as well. Uh, and then on this one, one more. And then this gives us two different sizes of mask that we can we can play around with. Um, which should, I think it should be enough, actually, because I'm just thinking, I can't think of any reason you would have a mask of any other size other than 8, 16, or the full-size mask. So let's just go with these, um, and we can we can pick the mask with some kind of routine uh, built into the... Um, uh, built into the macros somehow, so... Uh, Battlefield 2042 is going to be great, though. We should do, we should do, um, when it comes out, anybody who's got it and wants to, wants to join, we should do a, a, a I should stream it, but we should do a little team. We should create squadrons, um, stream squadrons and just join the game as, as squadrons and just run around. That'd be a lot of fun, I reckon. I'd be down for that if anybody wants to, uh, wants to join me on that. Saturday October, so you pre-order it now. I think it's probably going to be on the um, the, uh, the the EA Origin um, Pro Pass as well. So if you already have that, um, then you'll get it on that, uh, which I think I do. So um, yeah, in fact I do because I got it for a few games like Anthem and stuff, and I I loaded Anthem up once and never freaking played it, which is a shame. I've actually been playing a a, a weird little roguelike shooter called uh, Gunfire Reborn. Is a, a it's a, it's quite a I, th I think it's relatively new um it's early access anyway um and it's quite a simple game uh but it's a lot of fun i've really been enjoying it but i definitely recommend it it's called gunfire reborn uh i play on pc i'll always play on pc i'm not gonna i i well i tell a lie i did play battlefield 4 on x on uh, playstation 4 uh, just because it was one of the games that I that was available for the PS4, so I got it. But um, I'd much rather play these games on on a PC. Yeah, check out check out Gunfire Reborn if you want a nice little roguelike shooter. Uh, it's an interesting um, interesting little game to play. Uh, if you play Enter the Gungeon, I think I have a little bit. Yeah. Um, right, let's export binary here what i like about this this shooter is it, it's it's uh it's quite simple there's not a lot to it you've just got to kind of get through these rooms and the, the enemies are fairly predictable and um easy to kill but i like the, like all the weapons that you get and the the like choosing the weapons and the abilities that go with them uh it's kind of nice i can't remember which one it is no it's not that one there we go, sprite spin. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to, first of all, work out where this is. So, so zero, six, and seven. Uh, I mean, should probably be in an order somewhere, but that's fine like that. Um, uh, Sean, you should check out that, that game. Yeah, I got Biomutant. Uh, it's a bit buggy, so I, I, I put it down until they fix it. There's serious problems with the UI scaling. Um, you they like playing it in 4k the mouse doesn't match what you're clicking on like you have to click down and to the left or down and to the right 
so the UI scaling and, and stuff isn't in sync and it's really, really irritating. So I've just kind of, I've left it for now. I will go back to it, but um, I kind of left it until they fix that. Uh, okay, so I need the macros. So where's our screens? So persists, these are the bin files, so it's not the asset exports I need. Uh, I'll tell you what would be a good game for your um for your Surface Pro, uh, Sean. Um, uh, uh, Slay the Spire, or also um, Darkest Dungeon as well would be good. Both both of them would work really well on it. Go. What am I looking at now? There we go. Screens. Okay. So here's our screen macros. So in here, there's going to be a uh, register some kind of passable area. Here we go, add passable area. Okay, so we add an area like this, and then we add all these values to it here like that. So the only thing I think I need to do here is possibly have another macro Let's yeah, because unfortunately you can't overload macros, so you can't have. Um, uh, actually, no. Let's 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 do it like let's just add a width in here. So uh, char size. So this is going to be char size will be one to three, uh, which is width of mask in chars uh, so by default these need to be three but we can't really have default values in here unfortunately so um uh, so we will actually do it through here instead we're just going to have to go back and change all the all the macro because there aren't many of these already i think there's only like two or something in fact there might only be one Right, so let's call that mask size. That makes more sense. Everything else makes sense here, but mask size I have to kind of describe. So, okay, so now we need to find the passable areas, uh, which is probably in random place, obviously. Okay, yeah, see, it makes no sense that it's here. Oh, I've got an end key again. That's so nice. Okay, mask size. Okay, so the mask size is going to decide which sprite we show. Uh, so I need to find where the pointers are. Pointers, no, or frame, maybe. There we go. Okay, so this decides which frame we're using here uh, for, for, for this passable area. Uh, so this needs to change based on on this basically. So let's make a um, mask frames. Let's make it capital, to, and let's put the the device in. So we had um, four zero is is the the default when it's three wide, uh, and then we had. Uh, this one, six and seven, so four, six and four, seven in reverse. So four, seven, four, six. Okay, cool. Uh, you can't do if char size get type at non. Oh. No, it will com yeah, it will complain about the um. They will complain about the number of parameters you send in if you don't send them in. So what, what I sometimes have to do is pass like nulls in instead. But if I'm going to pass nulls in, I'm still I'm still going to have to go. I, I still may as well just go in and um, and just change them to pass the right right values in. So it's a small small thing, but um, yeah, bit annoying, but you know. We need a new series. The Mr. Men. How many have you got of the Mr. Men? Uh, Glasgow. Uh, uh, 
how is everyone getting on with uh, Milfork, by the way? I hope um, I hope we're going to see some amazing stuff soon. Um, just so you know, we we are having some issues with uh, uh, XEMU at the moment. Um, it, it has some problems when you try and run a PRG using the right uh, click, uh, the the right click menu. So. Um, the version that I posted in in the in the Discord is probably the best one to use at the moment. Um, just while while we're trying to solve this issue, um, it, we haven't made any any graphical changes, so everything should still work the same. What's the vape I use? Uh, it's a smock something or other. I can't remember the exact model number. Um, it just says vape pen twenty two, whatever that means, but it's a smock um, thing. I don't know if you can see it there. It's got a little, you, can, you won't be able to see that, but it's like laser etched with smock on the side. <laughs> and I'm not sure this month, it might not be this month, or it might be next month, but either this month or next month, there will be a double uh, giveaway with the uh, with the boards. Or what I might do is do a, a separate giveaway for something completely different um uh, just to kind of mix it up a little bit uh the music's broken so is there an excuse not to yeah it's it is it is a bit of a pain but i would say the version that i posted in in the discord is probably the best one at the moment uh in fact i shall pin that because that's probably um at the moment it's probably the best thing to do is use that version uh if i can remember where the hell i put it uh, i can't remember where I was. i'll do it after the stream it doesn't, doesn't matter um uh but the the version uh the version that he um the version that i've put up there so one of the problems we've got is that the uh I'm building the version that that you can download. I'm building that locally myself, and that version works absolutely fine when I build it. If it's built by the Travis CI system, then for some reason it crashes on certain things, and we don't know why that's happening. So LGB has been looking into that a lot, but in the meantime, you can use the version that I built, and it, it does work. I don't know why, but it does. We thought it might be SDL, problems with SDL, but we tried all the different versions of that and it doesn't seem to work. So it must be something on the build machine that's that's causing a failure somewhere. Let's get some more vodka in me. I've not done any code really yet. Uh, but it's it's way, way better. If you use the version that um I supplied on on Discord, it is way better. Um I mean it will run Turrican now, it will run Luma now, it will run uh, all of the Milfork uh, examples um, with only very minor glitches in some cases. Um, oh shit, where's the lid gone now? Crap, where did that lid go? No. Oh, actually, I could just use the other one. But yeah, it's it's a lot better now. Um, definitely recommend uh, using it. There's no there's no reason not to anymore. I would say. Um, um, but yeah, it's 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 really critical that we get the emulator working really well as well as we can get it working uh, because it's going to be very important. Um, in the near future um for for selling the system as well because people it's going to be people's first experience of the system is they're going to download the emulator i know that's kind of for a new system like this it's it's definitely not what you should be doing to get an, ex an example of the of the machine but unfortunately it is what a lot of people are going to do whether whether we like it or not that's exactly how people are going to be introduced to it so it needs to be as close close to a close to uh, the hardware as possible as soon as possible but also 
I'll be doing another competition, um, a, a bigger competition um, in a couple of months' time. Uh, I won't go into details now, but we will be doing a, a, a bigger competition. Um, and it's going to be critical that the emulator is working for that because people are going to have to submit through the emulator. So, um, so or submit code that works on the emulator. So it's, it's in my interest and, and everyone's interest to have that working as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, exactly. XEMU is the is the uh, is the gateway. So, uh, pinned in monthly giveaway. Ah, thank you. Thanks, Andy. Perfect. Yeah. So if you if you check the monthly giveaway channel, uh, check the pinned thing and just download that zip. You may get a warning about STL versions, but it will still work, um, and it should work absolutely fine, and it should work better than um, the current version at the moment on the. Um, uh, the current version at the moment on the XEMU site for some reason. Uh, we're, we are working on it. Uh, thank you, Dario Mo, for the resub. Very much appreciated. Cheers. Anyway, right, let's crack on with this. So the mask system has an update function. And the update function works out where the uh, the mask should be be placed. And we can see here it's it's set in the, uh, set in the height uh, and width. And then I'm just trying to work out exactly where it's, it's set in the values. So it's not here. So it's right to play it. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. Yep. So what I'm looking for is, is indexed code here. Um, because that's good, like this one here. Here we go. But I think it does a comparison, so it works out where things need to be placed. So this is going through every single um, where is the uh, here? It's going through every single mask uh, and and placing it based on that. So we need to figure out what where the skip is happening. So there is a skip. So something is going to skip over the mask if it's not if it's not the one that's being used because some places will have more than one mask. The screen we're working on right now is an example of that. Um, so skip horizontal, skip vertical. Well, nothing jumps straight to the skip; it just comes to here. Uh, okay. Oh, compare Y2. Here we go. So here we go. If this value hits two, then that means the mask has been selected. So at that point, we come to here. And yes, the mask values are being set here. So what we need to do is we need to take um, our data dot uh, mask size. Uh, actually, we will we'll put this into the Y register here. Uh, and then we're going to load the accumulator with uh, mask frames, uh, comma y. Now, because our mask size is passing as one, two, three, not zero, one, and two, um, we're going to put a minus one on here, and then that's the equivalent of passing in zero, one, and two uh, to this. So um, this is going to give us the frame, and then we can store that in our mask thing here. So this would just be data.frame. So these are the multiplexer um, attributes uh, or might re registers if you like. Um, and sprite zero is the one that's the mask. So um, we just pass it into here and, and stick frame zero on it. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make that sprite uh, red instead of black. So I'm hoping, yes, there we go. So there we go. So if we put that in there, Okay, let's uh, let's go and work on the screen. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set um, the player to start at the first screen again, uh, so we can just test the original code uh, against the this one here against the original kind of masking area. We will have to go into the screens in here and make sure these are changed um, to match. So there's no no passable area in that one. Uh, no 
passable area in that one. So we will see add passable area. I think it's going to be on that one. I, I don't know where it's going to be. It's probably the next one, actually. Not this one. This one. Yeah, add passable area. Okay. So here we just need to pass three in to say the size of our, our sprite. And that should work. So if we run this now, hopefully what we'll be able to do is see the red um, see the red square for it. And then we'll change it to um, a width of two and see if it actually changes the, the, the size of the, uh, the mass thing it should do in theory. Uh, take care, Sean. Good to see you again. You've not been around for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, so it's good to see you again. And well, well done on the house and everything. I look forward to popping around. Uh, okay, what's that not running? I've already got it open. I've already got it open here. Okay. So I'm really, really distracted tonight. <laughs> How many screens does the game have? Uh, I don't know the exact number. Um, offhand quite a few though okay I don't know why it's showing that there oh wait is that okay that's weird but you can see the mask up there now you can see it's the right size I don't know why it's doing that down there maybe that maybe that sprite should have been left Oh shit. Okay, I know what's going on here. I know what's going on. Okay, so one of the sprites needs to be blank. Uh obviously this sprite needs to be blank. Um to hide these sprites here. So I'm just thinking is there a better way of doing these? Um Well, one way would be to make that these sprites black instead of red and white at this point um changing the pointer though is a nice simple way of doing it so never think about this uh yeah because that, that's all it's doing is whenever it should be hiding them is turning into that that pan but up there it's working fine you can see it's, it's giving us the right height uh, sprite the mask sprite so that's good um right let's think about this a little bit okay what i'm what i'm gonna do for now is i'm gonna just oops i'm gonna leave that one blank um oh god damn it that's the easiest way to do this edit there there we go and just change this value so this is now 47 uh, which means in here that becomes ah, that's weird it's actually 47 but um in hex that would now be uh 6f which is uh, 64 plus 47 uh which is wait no that's not right I feel like that should be a different number, but it's oh yeah, that's right. Oh, okay, it was right. It was just the the pop up the uh, the, the rollover pop up thing tooltip uh, threw me off there. Okay, so it's a little bit weird that it's spread out like that. We can rearrange these sprites later if we need to. It's probably all right though. We've got loads of bloody room for sprites here as well. There's only a few areas where these sprites may need to load in uh, dynamically. Uh, so far, I think I think we're, we're doing all right. Okay. Uh, export sprite data. So what I'm going to do now, I know that the uh, the things are working. I'm just going to change the passable areas to be too wide on here. Uh, 
just to see if that works, and we should hopefully have fixed that issue now. Oops, wrong button. Never press F9 in Sublime. I don't know what that's supposed to do, but it's it's horrible. I don't know if it's like a reformat or something, but it's, it ruins ruins a uh, 6502 completely. Kick kick goad anyway. Okay, yeah, so it's got rid of that now. And then hopefully we should see a box here, but you can see now it's only too wide. So you can see the, the kind of back of the ship poking out. Uh, but it is working nice and smoothly up, up to... Oh, actually, it's not working perfectly because the size... Ah, okay, so we also need to take the size into account when we're when we're lining it up on this side. So there's our first thing that we need to do. Also, I'm going to put the mask on top so we can we can see it. Um, so let me just go and put this on top by changing this something in here. No, OK. Uh, so this is D01B, I believe. Let me check my manual. User one B uh, background sprite priority yes okay so do a search for D zero one B ah there we go okay so player is just setting its own sprite priorities but we have this default thing in the multiplexer okay so let's change that to be F E and that should be on top then um, so I'll keep the multiplexer open. Hopefully we should see that work properly now. Okay, it's not appeared on top. Why is it not appeared on top? Something else is set in that somewhere, it seems like. So I did zero, zero there, what would happen? Yeah, I definitely prefer this keyboard. I can type better on it making way less mistakes on it. It's the Durgud, Durgud uh, Taurus K320. Durgod, sorry. Dur I'll type it, it's easier. Uh, but I, I definitely, definitely, definitely type better on it. That's for sure. Okay, so I, I wish that mask would appear on top, but something is overwriting that value, and I don't know what it is. Um, seems like there's only two places where it should be overwritten, but for some reason it seems to... Let's just check if there's anywhere else. Uh, okay, never mind. Uh, what I will do in that case is in uh, in here. I'm just going to put some temporary code in the bottom of this. And so here, I'm just going to do Also, I've got a British keyboard layout again now. So now I'm pressing all the wrong buttons uh, for 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 symbols and stuff. But it's nice. It's uh, see the colours on it there. It's grey with uh, with orange escape and enter key. Looks nice. I like having those weird colored enter and escape keys for some reason. I think because I'm starting to accept that I'm getting old and I probably need some help. Um, 
help identifying the, the, the big important escape button key. <laughs> Which button do I press to get out of things? Uh, let's, let's see if that's done it. No, it's still it's still drawing behind. I have no idea why that's doing that. The, there's obviously something else somewhere which is overriding that. Or or it's simply not uh, that sprite. Maybe, wait, am I pressing the wrong? Maybe I'm pressing the wrong sprite number. Maybe I'm pressing the wrong, uh, doing the wrong sprite number. Let me, uh... well, that's definitely the wrong sprite number, isn't it? It should be that. Let's just do a let's just do it this way. There we go. Every time that runs now, that should be fine. Oh god, VI. I hate Vim. It annoys the shit out of me. There we go. Okay. I don't know why that was not working before, but yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so you can see what I need to do. I need to move that so that red box hits, the, hits this edge and that's due to the mask size, right? So the mask size, um, should be, uh, included in these calculations here. So somewhere in here, there is going to be uh rectangles at this bit maybe rectangle sx2 oh god this is it's no it's not that ah here this is adding half of the the sprite width here that's what that is doing there so this actually needs to add a value based on the mask so what we can do is we can do the same thing here do uh, well let me just put the original one in so instead what we need to do is we need to add data dot uh, mask size Uh, now either can we we can add this four times, which I don't like the idea of doing, or we can actually when when the passable area is added. So when we do the uh, add here, uh, it's not going to work, is it? Hang on. Oh, we can do it in the macro. We can do it in the macro. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put um, uh, mask pixel width or half pixel width, let's put it. And then we can do this in the macro. Okay, so then this value here becomes a value that we need to add in, in our routine down here. I've got a bloody window open. There we go. Wait, that looks like borders, actually. Oh, maybe this is the border size. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. I'm not sure now. Because that looks like take the Y, add half the border. But the border is more than that. Less than that, even. But anyway, it would be this, uh, comma X. But I don't think that's going to work. I think that's... Right, let's go and add that to the macro and then we'll, we'll come back. So the macro is here. Um, and this would be half pixel width. And this would now be mask size times four. Which gives us that value.
<laughs> Nobody did terrible out and no, they didn't. Let's see that again. There you go. So now what I need to figure out is what these values mean in terms of sizes data dot width ah is it this bit here are we to the right of the rectangle's left side uh oh, magic okay <laughs> Um, so it's this side, ensuring it clamps to the right side, player X plus 24. Okay. So it's not half, it's this one here. Okay. So that, whoops, that's the value we want. Okay, cool. Right. So we'll, we'll duplicate that and then we'll grab data dot, uh, pixel. It's actually pixel width, not half pixel width. So we'll change that in a second. Uh, comma x there okay that should give us what what we're after uh, so we just need to change that just need to change this to be times eight we'll give that a quick check why is that not running oh because i already got it open Oh, what happened there? Oh, I had data. Okay. Still not right somewhere. Muscle areas, screen macros. There we go. It's such a good tune, this. It really is. Try and tell for you, I guess. Right, let's see if this works. So hopefully now the red things should come right to the edge this time oh, i still not doing that oh no it kind of is until i'm outside of it and then it and it fails so almost there but not quite and then that side is fine okay which is catching the boundary there okay so almost, almost correct. You can see how it snaps to the right position eventually. So let's go and have a look. So that's this bit here where it adds this width in. Ah, there's a subtract here as well. So that probably needs to be the same as well. Okay, so let's take that. So anytime we see that 24, we probably need to we need to add that in. I think that's probably the only other place where it will be. Considering how com well not complex, but it's it's um it's not the easiest code to read because of the the, the math that's going on in it. Um, I'm surprised that I can actually <laughs> work with that after not touching it for probably around about five months. There we go. And that's perfect. Okay, so that's in exactly the spot we want it to be in. Um, okay, so with that in mind, we will just try one more um, size. So we'll try changing it down to a size of one. And then if that works, we'll go and do fix the screen that needs it uh, with the right values hopefully if 
all, all goes well. And what it should do is if it's constrained in a in a small area, that's the width of the sprite, it should just stay in that area and not move. Um, see whereas now it's it's moving the entire area of the box so the box runs from here to here and from here up to this edge here all this just so it can appear to go behind things with a with a nice uh a proper mask but i think it's worth it i think the effect is good so Okay, cool. Uh, that seems to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that back to three on here. And we're going to change the screen that loads up to begin to 17. Uh, or 23 in terms of these screens here. So that's this one here. So this is the screen that loads it. Oh, it actually has some persistence already in it. That's... Oh, because it's 23. We need 24, actually, is the one that we want. So let's duplicate this file. Let's do it in the folder. It's the easiest way of doing it. Okay. Call it 24. Okay, cool. Right now, we need to go into this one, and we need to change some stuff. So it needs to be 24. It needs to persist 24. So the persistence file is the one that stores all the hit points for all the objects in the screen. Um, it's calculated automatically from the char pad file. Um, so it's important that, that this is imported in, in, each, uh, in each screen that uses these things. Uh, then we need to import it into here. Um, I could not tell you what these numbers are about, why they do, don't match here at all. Um, I'm going to make them match because it doesn't make any sense that they match up to that point. It's probably just an oversight. But yes, it is, in fact, because look, they're, they are here. So screen 24. So basically, by default, screens have um, have screen 00, zero which is the behavior that does nothing. So uh, if a screen will have 000, zero, zero as its behavior until we go in and, and edit it. So slowly we want to build these up. And I think we've got, oh, I can tell you how many screens there are actually. I don't know who asked it before, but we can tell you. It looks like 99 or something, but I'll tell you the exact number. It is 99, yeah. 99 screens. Well, actually, no, 90, uh, 100, 100 screens exactly. Yeah. But I think screen zero is just a blank one. I think screen zero is just there as a kind of, as a, a null behavior thing. Um, it certainly doesn't have any any behavior in here, so. Close to cats of the third kind, that would be a good. Oh, so many make a series with, with things like that in. I don't know what you would, I don't know what the series would be, but I'm sure you can find a series that that would fit into. There's still there's still one that I did the other day that I, I'm surprised hasn't uh, turned up yet. How many screens does the game have? A hundred, apparently. Uh, that's how many the map is currently throwing up. So, 2020 edition, no encounters of any kind. <laughs> that's... Oh, that was you. Okay, yeah, no worries. A hundred. I didn't know, but... Um... Apparently, it's already calculated for me in the uh, char pad output. So, God damn finger saw. Okay, so we've now got a screen loaded in. Okay, so that's this one here. I'm just going to load the loader over there, push the loader over there, get rid of this screen. Uh, so, currently, it doesn't do anything. It just registers all the entities that belong on the screen, updates them, and deregisters them. Entities basically means these things in the persistent state. So that's mines, uh, anything anything that needs to have some kind of interaction will be automatically registered. Uh, well, not automatically. You have to you have to do this. This is the bare minimum you need to do on a screen uh, to register all the mines and things like that. 
um, then additionally, what we need to do is we need to then start defining some of the passable areas. So let's go into the game and take a look at what where the passable areas are. Um, and uh, try and define them. So we'll define one first and see, the, see if it works. Hopefully it does. Uh, and then hopefully we can define multiple and it will pick the closest one. Fingers crossed. I, I've, I've not tried this out yet, but it should, in theory, pick the closest one. Okay, so... Okay, I don't know why that... That's weird. That's very weird. Oh, it's... Pr ah, okay, that might be to do with this, then. Yeah, it's some. okay, so I need to turn that off at some point. This spinny thing. Also, it looks like it's missing a piece here. I don't know if that's let's load up the let's load up the lab. Okay, so we've got one bug and we need to fix. Hey Thalamus. Uh so let me take a look. Uh, I think it's I can't remember which one we're working on now. I think it's this one. Yeah, this is this one because it has all the all the other screens in, I believe. Let's zoom out. Yeah, all right. So which screen are we looking at? We're looking at... I forgot which way we went now. Ah, we were here, weren't we? Okay, yeah, so it's missing this piece down here. So I think this might be a bug with the way that the screen is drawn. And you can see how these are, these are bugging out. And this is, I think this is to do with the mace, right? So if I start the game again... Um, and watch what happens as I enter the screen. What did I do to your map? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's. It, I think it's a it's a bug in the uh, in the screen transition code. I think because it is there, but then as soon as I enter the screen, it kind of does some stuff. See, it's there now, and it didn't bug out on me that time. But if I go down to the bottom and enter. See, it's it's letting me explode stuff here, or it's removing stuff here, but it's hitting stuff over here. I think it's to do with this mace. If I turn the mace off on the player, try it again. If that's the case, then what I just need to do is I need to wait a frame before rendering the mace, which is fine. We already have something similar for other things. Uh, I believe it's the mines wait a frame before they start detecting whether or not you're you're um, you're close to them or not so you just need to do the same thing so i think if i go down here and enter the screen yeah see not a problem so i think what's happening is because you're on the the right hand side of the screen then you transition um but before the the the, the game can realize that the mace is no longer on the right hand side of the screen um it it basically does the collision check against these here. It hits a few of these, which then says, okay, I've hit these, so I need to spawn the uh, the little pickups, uh, which it does. Um, and then I need to remove the, the object. And unfortunately, because now the screen is scrolled across, it removes them from over here instead, and we remove tiles from this side. So let's fix that. So let's go in here uh, and take a look in my... Let's see how they do it. I'm pretty sure that they are going to do it. I think it's in, is it in these. I think it's in these. There's probably somewhere. Actually, let me open a zero page file. This is a bit of a distraction from what we were doing, but I, I think it's important to do this while it's fresh in my mind. So we go. Zero page. Okay, so somewhere in here, there's probably a flag. To, well, it won't be in this way, it'll be in this piece here. Uh, seeing anything. Okay, so let's think about this a different way then. Uh, I think I think maybe I fix this by changing where where the the order of the updates i think i changed in here didn't i i think that fixed it uh but the problem is can't really move the player so i have to do a mace update here 
be easier to disable parrots. Yeah, I need to disable the mace. But the problem is it needs it needs one frame. It needs to go through this routine once. Uh, well, it's actually this stuff here. It needs to have gone through this section once um, before it can do the mace updates. And the mace update is, oh, mace update there. Ah, let's get rid of that mace update. See what happens. So I think now what will happen is the mace will freeze as we transition. Um, but it should stop it from hitting anything. If that's the case, then what we can do is we can just change this mace update to be a soft update. Um, so it just does um so it just does the mace animation but doesn't do any of the collision checks. So I think that's probably what it is. Let's let's try that out. Disable the mace. Yeah, I think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be something like that along those lines. I think I added that update to make sure that the, the mace didn't look stupid when it transitioned screens. You see, it's fine now. It's not hitting those things at all. Because you can see it sticks over the other side of the screen. It's It's hard to notice, but if I put it on slow, you will see. This is why I did it. So I put it on slow like that and wait for it to be like there, and then do a transition. Oh, no, too slow. Right now. You see how it stays over that side. So I can either turn it off here, which is probably the right thing to do. Um, but okay, let me find scroll, scroll frame. Okay, how do I know if I'm in scroll frame? Uh, map lower scroll map direction branch of minus normal frame okay so if this is a positive value then we're scrolling okay so in that case when i do this update which i will keep in place uh player mace update okay so it's in here here we can skip this okay that should be enough okay cool uh oh jump okay so we need the rts in here again all right It says certain charts to ignore in the collision routine. Um, yeah, we can do that quite easily. Um, yeah, we can do that. It's kind of what I'm doing with this passable areas, but the passable areas has a mask built into it. So it would just be a simplified version of the passable areas, basically. Uh, so you'll see when I, when I set the mask up for this, that the, um hopefully this works without ah oh, no it still blew things up okay oh i'll tell you what i could do i could just turn it off here yeah let's do that instead all right so what we'll do is we'll leave that in place like so and then in here instead of doing a mace update we will hide the mace so this is only going to hide the mace if it's actually visible um if it's not visible then it's going to have no effect and we don't need to do the update all right hey proton how are you doing but yeah um having having certain characters ignored is possible i i, I would say it rather than it be chars different characters it would be It depends. How, if for what for what purpose would that be? Um, because remember the chars, um, the chars change on on every screen. So the char number for this dome, for instance, um, say it's say it's ten now. Um, 
when I come back into here, it might be something different, like 50. It might have a different number. So because the, the, the chart set is built dynamically um, as I enter each screen uh, to allow us to have more than more than 256 characters in the in the set, basically. Uh, could we add to the persistent set? Uh, yes, but again, the persistent set is all it's all collidable. We'd we'd still have to have a specific check just for that character. Uh, and the other problem with with the dome being like that as well is that we need to put. Um, we need to put beams coming from the dome from the down the screen. That's going to be best with chars. Uh, let me have a think on that. I, I I think of a way to do it. I'm, th there'll be a way to do it. I'm absolutely sure. I just need to I just need to figure out what it's going to be. Anyway, that's fixed our our bug here. So let's um, say yes now and figure it out. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I I think there's it should be really easy to do. I just need to figure it out. That's all. Okay, let's work out this passable area. So um, it's one, two, three, four, five, six times two. So it's twelve high, one wide, and we'll guess the position. We can we can check that out later. So let's get rid of all the stuff we don't need. Uh, don't need screen macros. Don't need zero page. We do need this file here, and we do need passable area. So we'll start by just putting one in, um, and we'll see how that works. And if that works well, then we'll move on to to add all three of them. Um, hopefully, this is is fine. Um, I just noticed this screen has no entity. Oh, mind you, it has no has no entities in it. So actually, do we need entities for every screen, or is it only when we have? Hmm. Actually, I just want to check, test something. I think entities is only for mines. I think I think the spikes don't matter, so I just want to see if the spikes still go off on this screen. Uh, if you can still destroy the spikes, that is. I think entities is only if they have to have some kind of processing update. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say that one. <laughs> I knew it would be steps as well. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so it's not needed on this screen. But this screen probably will have entities because of these fans. These will probably be entities just to make it my life a bit easier. Um, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So let's leave those out then and just go with the passable areas. So this is our position. This is our size. This is our width. So our size is one wide, 12 high. Uh, our position is, let's take a rough guess, so uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and it starts at 1 here, so 1, 2, 3, 13, 3, so let's try that. We're slowly invading, um, yeah. Must have missed one of the Mr. MBGs this stream. Oh, really? You've only got 10 out of the 20. Oh, that's going to be fun watching you try and guess that one again. All right, let's see what happens. You can always watch watch back the first few minutes as well, I guess. I'm impressed that you keep doing the, um, oh, actually, you haven't done that. If not, we'll just have to have shit domes, rating three out of five, the domes were crap. I'm sure we'll, we'll figure out a way, a way of doing it. I'm, I'm absolutely certain. I mean, it would work just taking the bottom row of pixels. See where the, the shine is here. Just move the shine up by one row and just remove the the rest of the pixels and squash it down definitely make it work and still look the same
Okay, well, that hasn't put any passable area in there at all. Ah, okay, so one thing we do definitely need. Uh, when you have a passable area, you also need to... Oh, no, you don't. Update. I thought you needed to update. Ah, there you go. Passable area update. So most of the things that we set up with macros do have their own update functions. And rather than call everything all the time, we we, we rely on the, uh, the screen code to work out uh, for itself what it needs to update. That way, a screen can update just what it needs and nothing more. Um, and the game itself is kind of dumb about what what needs update, and it's it's down to each screen to to work that out. But it's not displaying that passable area for some reason. It's definitely the right screen twenty four. Let's check the other code on here. So we had a passable area there. We don't have any other stuff in here. We do have a persistence in here, but no persistence file loaded into it because there is nothing on this particular screen. Um, that's literally all we do is just passable areas update. Okay, let's copy one of the original. Uh, let's do the big one, this one. See if there's anything else on that screen that updates things. No, I mean doors, switches, sprites, and nothing, nothing unusual in there. Everything else looks relatively normal. Uh, Small areas update. Yeah. Uh, checking our load that we load in the right screen. Yeah, I mean it must be doing because it's got the persistence data in it. So, okay, that's weird. Make more Mr. Member as I just said. 20, yeah, 20 is plenty. 20 is plenty. I mean, you could, you know, otherwise somebody could say, oh, let's do a Pokemon themed uh, background and have every Pokemon that ever existed and it would just be ridiculous. You, you don't want too much in. All right, see, it's working here. So this passable area definitely works here. That's annoying. Uh, Mr. Pukeballs, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it. Cheers. Um, okay. Okay, so the passable area seems to work, but not when I do this size. So I have no idea why that might be. So let's just go and check the macros just to make sure that I get the right things in here. So passable area, X position and Y position, width and height and mask size. Okay. X and Y position, width and height. Okay, let's make the width more than... Let's try that. So 13 across 3. Oh, maybe the, maybe the position's wrong. Let me move the position back. Yeah, let me move the position back a couple and see what happens. All right, let's do that. Yeah, it's not displaying at all. Why is it not displaying? Am I am I miscounting the character positions here? Okay, let's 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 try this again. Uh, but let's move the character positions right over. Let's do a nice small number. Um, actually, let's match this one up here. But let's change the width and height of everything. Okay, so let's do three.
yeah, I'm glad I tackled this one now. I think this was probably needed. I think I have a plan for the domes. I think I have a plan for the domes. I will I will think about it a little bit, but I think it's uh I, I think it will work. Okay, so this would appear to be working in this position. So let's try making it thinner. Because this is a width of one. Let's try making it a width of one. Maybe there's a maybe there's a problem with the, the fact that it's the same width as the the thing. Or maybe if it's wider it will work. So in which case it's gonna be a fun little maths problem. Because it could be that it's just not, it doesn't know where to put it. It thinks it's the mask that isn't unnecessary because it's the same width. So we might need a special case for it. I think that's probably what's going to happen, actually. Ah, no, you see, look, it's showing there. Okay, so it is showing and it's in the right place. Yeah, let's try again if I come off the screen and go in. So yeah, it's immediately there. Okay, cool. Okay, let's move it over then. So if I move it over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's this is the value I had before. I don't know why this is not. Yeah, this is the value I had before. I can't explain why that's suddenly suddenly working. That's weird. All right, it's fine. Well, at least it doesn't need, I, I thought it was going to need some weird kind of maths to, to make it appear in the correct place uh, when it's the same width as the as the mask itself. But you see there, it's not appearing now. What? Okay, let's... Let's do it a couple of steps at a time. It's very odd, though. It's very, very odd. Just trying to think about it now. I think. No, you you should with backgrounds you can you can spam if you want. There's no no limit on the per person limit on that. But you only have like fifteen seconds or so. Okay, so we've moved it back a little bit now. I'm not seeing it. What the? Oh, it's, and I'm seeing it late for some reason. It didn't appear straight away. Interesting. Okay, let's figure out what the trigger is to make it appear and then see what we'll go from there. Damn it. This is. I need vodka. That's what I need. So it's a logic problem now. I need my liquid logic. But how many have I had? I think I've had quite a few vodkas on a school night. Oh no. Okay, so Ah oh, yeah, maybe that's where it is. Maybe I have to come from the right. Ah 
Yeah, that's yeah, because it seems to be when I've got past it, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, I think you're right. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, okay, uh, I need to look at this. <laughs> you've you've got a method for figuring these out now as well. Okay, so it's only appearing if we are on the right side of it, weirdly. Check me out to the right or the rectangles, the left side. Check we are to the left of the rectangles or right side. So ah, we need to be slightly within the area. Okay, so we can change these values then slightly. Okay. So if we want to check the left side. Then if we just add a value to this here, so we just like add two, then it will start showing the mask when we're two away. Let's just add one. It might be enough. Let's let's well let's well let's add two and then if it's if it works then we'll Okay, yeah. No, it doesn't show. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Because when we're on this side, our X position is here. When we're on this side, it's only when our X position actually crosses into it. So we will we'll be about there. Let me try that again. So actually what we need to do is we need to add the whole width of the sprite to it. Not just the, not just the left hand. Okay. Yeah, okay, I think I get it. So as soon as the left-hand side of the sprite passes through the mask, we should see it. Yeah, all right. So that means we need to add the entire width of the sprite. So if I go here and I add 1, 8 is the width. There we go. Interesting news from the uh, DMA from Gardeners has said it sounds feasible. Describe it more precisely. I deal with some pseudocode and I'll take a look. If it's just another counter, it shouldn't be a problem. We might be able to get that. <laughs> and then he said in the uh, Mega 65 Excited channel, we can make the DMA Turing complete. <laughs> I mean, that would be nice, but I don't think it's necessary. No, it's still not picking it up. It's picking it up too late, but this is this is definitely the problem. So I just need to figure out exactly what we should be checking against here. Oh, wait, hang on, what's this? Hey, play X. Oh, uh, hang on, hang on. Oops. It's it's along these lines. This is what we need to be checking against. Um, I need to figure out what this is, player X, because I'm assuming we've got fractional uh, 
lower bite and uh, most significant bite as well. Least significant and most significant bite, yes. So it looks like this is uh, fractional, least significant, most significant. But I need to confirm that. Uh, God, do you think I would have put a comment in to say which one? Player X plus one, there you go. Player MSB, yeah, so MSB. Oh no, it could be either of those, okay. Let's find the left and right in here and just go off that, I guess. Yeah, okay, so so it goes from yeah it's little endian all the way so i mean of course it is if i should just remember that okay um so in that case this is actually the msb and this is the lsb so i think what i probably need to do here is i'm going to do some sneaky uh, self mod code here. So I'm going to take this value and this value, and I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this. And then here I should be able to do uh, like so. So the reason we need to pre calculate here is because obviously. Um, the, the order of checks here means I can't just do the addition here. Uh, plus the carry flag is required um, for the the comparisons here. So best to do it first, then save the values into the right locations in here, and then do the, the, the check. The right-hand side doesn't need to be checked because on the right-hand side, we're checking. So when you're checking the left-hand side of the mask, um, so when you're checking this side of the mask, I'm just looking at the in the camera now, so it's right. If you're checking this side of the mask, you need to check against this side of the sprite. If you're checking this side of the mask, you need to check against that side of the sprite because opposite sides are going to, uh, the ones that touch first. Now, the only other problem we've got here is I think it might try and clamp. Oh, no, no, it shouldn't actually. It should be fine because it should be limited by the space that it has. That it's been assigned, so I think this should work now. Wait, what's the Shallon sixty k about? Shallon fifty x, Shally fifty k. So. <laughs> Oh, I missed the wrong. I see. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's almost right. The problem is now is it's following. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 So that's because now what it's doing. So this bit is correct now. But what it's trying to do now is set Sprite to play position X, ensure it clamps to the right side. So in theory, I should be able to do this. So we can cancel these ones out. Yeah. 
here as well. Oops. Ah, what have I done? There we go. Oh man, I sure hope that works because that's it's starting to get complicated now. Oh, you're finding them all. Have you got left four left? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. Right. Now let's move that over to the right position. So 13. And see how this works. Thankfully, none of that was maths. Thankfully, all that was logical stuff. If that was maths, I'd be struggling now because I'm feeling a little bit drunk. So. Oh, it's still too far away. I'm like, I must be so close to it. Okay, let's try. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh... I mean, I don't like doing this because it's, it's wrong, but. I've done some more interesting, yeah. The uh, math gets really funky when, when I've had a drink. Oh, why is it not displaying? Have I got the position wrong? Still on 12. Let's put this back to 1.8. Because it should appear before I get to it. Maybe I've just got the position. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's the wrong position. I don't know. We'll see. Ah, it was it was incorrect. Okay, cool. So I should be able to put another one in here. So if I just add. One, two, three, four, five. Should hopefully be able to create a second one. So let's just do that. And then another five to create a third. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. Um, let me just check the passable areas has a maximum that, that fits. The, okay, max passable areas. Uh, four. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> Well, I hope what it will do is it will pick the relevant one to display, uh, the one that we're closest to, basically. Nice. Cool. So let's go ahead and turn that back to black again and make it appear behind everything. Uh, so set it to black. Get rid of that. Oh, yes. And now we have a, a nice masking system that allows us to use thinner areas as well, which means we can put the mask on this screen as well. Uh, cool. There we go. It's working. And we can go behind these now. I should also be able to. Oh, no. Can't shoot through them. Okay, so we need to make sure that the, the mask routine works with bullets as well, uh, which is something I can address probably shortly. 
before we continue though what i want to do is just uh try putting the mask on this screen as well so this column down here should be masked um so we're going to do the same thing on screen 23 and hopefully this should just work nice and simple now uh, so zero one two three four five six so it's at position six and it looks like it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten high ten by two position six uh i don't know how many foot down the screen will work that out in a second so let's open screen 23 and then we'll do the bullets if i've got to, yeah i've got about an hour left i'll do do the bullets make sure they go through um yeah it should be easy i think it should be easy Hey, Skunk Monkey, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. So yeah, on um, Saturday, I I was going to do some more DMA stuff. I'm not sure because I wanted to do a rotating Zoom. Um, but unfortunately, it's not going to work without a particular fun this new function that I need. So um, I, I'm going to uh, pro probably do something different instead. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but um, um, we'll have a look on when that comes around on uh, on Saturday. No idea exactly what it's going to be, but um, it's probably not going to be DMA. Not yet, anyway. Okay, so we do have mines down here. So we've got entities on this screen, so I'll leave all the entity code in, but we do need to do the passable area. So the passable area was, what, six across? Uh, I don't know how many down it was. It was two wide, ten high, and two wide in terms of the char sprite here. Um, actually, that could probably be calculated from this value. There's no reason that needs to be passed in because it's it's going to be three or lower. If this value is lower than three, then it will be this value. Otherwise, it will be three. So yeah, I could probably pre-calculate that, but uh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's a macro. It's not gonna. It's not gonna change anything. Uh, the value still needs to be added in the same way. Um, okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. I'm gonna say thirteen, fourteen, fifteen down. Maybe no, that doesn't make any sense. This is the bottom of the screen. So this is twenty four, twenty three, twenty two, which makes this thirteen. 13 plus 10, yeah, we get to here, 23, so 13. So 13 down, 6 across, 6 across, 13 down, 2, 10. And then here I need the passable areas update. Miss Men. <laughs> I like it. Mr. Misses. Okay, so this probably isn't going to work straight away. I think I need to leave the screen just because of the way that the the screen loader works. But yes, there you go. Perfect. And hopefully it works all the way down to the bottom. Excellent. Cool. Cool. So invisible passable areas um, work. I mean, the passable areas could even work for the domes as well, but I mean, it would be overkill to do that on every single dome on the screen. Um, so I've got a different way of doing that. But yeah, that, that works fine. I'm kind of pleased with that. It's good. So obviously only the player is going to be masked by this. The the um, Nothing else is going to be masked by this because it would just be too much. Uh, to to create a mask for every single thing. I mean, you could kind of expand the the mask a little bit, uh, but even then, you're only covering forty two pixels in height, and this is definitely going to be more than forty two pixels in its rotation. Even if you move the sprite up and down, and then it just becomes super complicated. I think it's fine. It's moving quickly. It's just, oh oh interesting. Oh, that's that is interesting. What the hell's going on there? So if I do that one, come back in here. Wait, what? Uh, 
Okay, there is definitely a weird bug there. But I've only got... Oh, wait. No, it's this screen, isn't it? Yeah. It's like it added this one in as well. Let's go back and try that again. So it was uh, when I... Yeah, all right, let's, let's try it again, see if we can figure out. I need to do the bullets next anyway, so. <laughs> Despite that keyboard monsters. Oh man, that would drive me mad. That would drive me mad. I know a, a friend of mine at work, um, he's, he's left now, but um, he was he was well into his mechanical keyboards and he, he had a similar keyboard with almost no keys on it. It was it was kind of ridiculous. It was also wasn't QWERTY as well. It was some other weird, um, weird layout. Okay, so and then I go in here, and then it's like the mask appeared here. Yeah. So maybe I need to reset the masks or something because. They shouldn't be showing in this location. So um, let's take a quick look at this. So uh, if uh, next in, yeah, passive areas next in, let's make that zero again. Okay, so on every single map load, there is uh, a, like a reset thing, which resets everything. Uh, map loader here. Uh, to find the right area which does it though persistence remove i think it is this bit actually next screen ah here we go. oh possible areas reset okay so it should be doing it that's what areas reset okay multiplex the data life loss with zero effort but it's still filling all these values in for some reason even though next index is on zero. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set all the all yeah all the Y's here. So um, I'll just do it with four rows. It's easy enough to do. Uh, so data dot Y. Actually, I'll, I'll I'll make a little loop for it. No decks with max absolute areas minus one. So that should move all the Y positions down. So if there is still one there that is trying to render for whatever reason, um, it should kind of be down off the screen somewhere. So in theory, it shouldn't show at all. Um, let's try again. You're almost that keyboard guy at work. I've got a tool and you form, change the home road, modifies like that. <laughs> Disable sprites used to mask and move them out of the visible. Yeah, that's what I do. Move them out of the visible area. That seems to be the sensible way to do this. So, so let's try and replicate again. So go off this screen, come back on here. So I went through that mask. So, so what it's doing, it seems to be creating, recreating this mask, uh, but with some parameters from these other ones on this screen. So, oh, it's still displaying there though. Why? Something is triggering it to appear there. Um, well, that's interesting. It should be resetting it. Maybe the reset isn't being called. Let's 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 just check that's being called. Let's because uh, if this isn't getting called, then that would be a problem. So let's just increment the border there and just see if it is actually happening. Oh, you only need one more. Wow. There's so many, though. You could, uh, have you got, I guess you've got a long list, haven't you? Uh, just download the latest EMU merger brand SIP 64 where it seems to start. Yeah, so the problem is, is it does start. Um, but if you try, if you do a right click and run PRG directly, 
and then load a PRG that way, it would fail. So it will run from the it will run from the um, the main menu. Uh, it will run from the command line, like from your from your. Um... Okay, it is running every time, isn't it? Damn it! All right. Uh, but if you try to do the the inject PRG from the UI, it fails for some reason. Okay. Okay, so what is it doing here? It's definitely should be resetting. Which means all these values should be reset. I mean, I could just reset all of these back to zero again and it would be fine, right? So... I mean, this is this is going to properly um, change all this. So, I mean, it's more code than I was kind of hoping. I would have hoped that just resetting the index was enough, but apparently not. Uh, but the index should be being checked here. Uh, on where is it? Here. So maybe something is changing the X register somewhere, but I don't think it is. Uh, ah, could it be this actually? Ah, uh, it is, it's that. So it would have still, it would probably still happen because it's these values that are a problem. So actually, let me just go and reset that piece of code up here. Um, you get rid of that. I don't think that's needed now. I think the problem was that this routine was always set in the mask. At the end of the mask check, it was always set in the mask, if there was, if there was a mask on the screen, uh, which means if you hadn't already triggered one, it wasn't a problem. It just puts the mask where it should be. But on the next screen, when you haven't yet triggered a mask, it just puts the last triggered mask in place, but with the new width based on your mask size, which is here. Um, so it could have actually ended up doing some very weird stuff as well. Uh, also, this data mask size should be... comma X here. So there's a few bugs in here. First of all, this should be comma X and then transferred to the Y. And secondly, this whole thing should be skipped if you get to this point. Because you don't want to place a mask if there isn't one to place. So that should fix it, I think. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, so as I say, there is a there is a version of uh, the emulator in uh, the Discord channel that you can use. Um, pinned in the monthly giveaway channel, I think Andy pinned it there. Oh, now it's not showing the mask at all. God oh, damn you! Okay, Let's see what happens on this screen then. So we're in the right lines, I think. It's just yeah, it's not showing at all. It's letting me through, but it's not showing the mask. You can see why the mask is needed. It just kind of looks a bit shit without it. So, okay, so we might not have time to do the bullets tonight, but uh... it's like this value is now wrong for some reason. If I just do that, it probably is going to work, right? But that, they, this is kind of wrong because it's not using an index. It's just taking the first width, which is going to be... I mean, it's for for the cases I have, it's going to be fine. Um, but that might not be the case for all of them, so... Some screens may have multiple widths of masks. 
No, it's still not working. Okay. Okay. Oh, we need to check all the masks. Wait, no, 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 no. Okay, let's put it back to that. So I think we might need to keep the reset in. Code that works, which is wrong, and no one knows why it works is the best code. Yeah, always. Okay, I think we might need to put this in. I might need to put the mask with it. I, I need to do something, I think. Um, that should work. Though. That's weird. Problem is, I did the, this code four or five months ago now, so. Yeah, that could, why is that not loaded? Sorry, I keep looking at that keyboard that Monsters is posting. It's mental. Anyway, enough of that. Okay, so put that here back in, right? What the fuck? I've completely broken it now. Are the masks defined in the Mac? Could there be an extra on that screen by mistake? They're defined on a screen by screen basis. So this screen only has one in it here. Uh, this screen has three in the right places. I, I know what's I know what's happening in terms of why the extra one is appearing. Um, but what I don't know is why it's not uh, displaying correctly now for some reason. Uh, let's go back to that being the, the thing. God damn it! This is getting this is getting bizarre because I feel like I'm not really doing. Whoa! Big moth just flew past. Go away! Fucking hate moths. Okay, so if we reach the end, we get to here. I feel like I, I feel like I broke something important here. I uh, missed a small. I think it was one of the first ones tonight. Yeah. Okay. Now it works. Okay. Okay. So. That that is kind of a problem because that is essentially uh, this being wrong. Okay, this needs to this at the moment this is just grabbing the first one, but this needs to actually grab the right one based on which value we're using here. Uh, Which if we jump to here, it should be the X from here. But the problem is, is it, it's sometimes this isn't happening. It's not getting to two, it's only getting to one. And so this, this is a catch. So let me put a little thing in. Counts um, positional matches. So this, this counts whether there's a, a, an X position or a Y positional match. The reason it does this is to try and pick the best match. So if it finds one where there's two matching, that's the one it uses, which is why the the mask jumps between different um, between different posts when there's more than one, uh, because it's doing it's checking the mask. It's matching. It says there's three posts. It's matching a Y position on all three, uh, but it's only matching the X position on one, and it's that one that it jumps to. Otherwise, when it's finish what it does is it just draws any of them uh here and that's that's the problem is when it tries to draw any of them so 
So I'm going to suggest that what we do instead is increase the x here. And then here, I'm going to load mass size minus 1 comma x, transfer that into the y. Then that way, it's always going to get the last one that it checked. Now, on the case where, yeah, that might actually do it. Let's try that. We might need to clear the, uh, clear the values. We might need to clear all the values to get rid of the, the other ones, but yeah. Okay, so that works fine there. Okay, so that one still appears. But now I think if I clear... No. Ah, no. I know what I need to clear. God damn it. It's so freaking obvious. It's so obvious. These are the values that it's passing in to the multiplexer. So if there isn't a if there isn't a mass to show, it's just showing whatever the last one was here. So I basically need to change that. So if I just go up here uh, and in the reset, as well as storing it in the multiplex, I need to store the mask Y default. So when you reset, the mask gets reset and gets pushed off the screen, and then by default it won't appear. That's it. That's all I needed to do all along. God damn it. Although I have fixed what was potentially a bug, so. <laughs> okay, so that one's fine. And hopefully on this screen now, it shouldn't show because the mat it will try and draw the mask in the multiplexer and it should ah okay no okay so why is that doing that damn it hey my command oh man all right it's it's along the lines of these values so you just got to reset the right ones Could be the x as well. I mean, maybe if I set x to zero, should be fine. Because otherwise, why would that be being set? We're matching on the y position, but the x position. All right, let's yeah, let's do that as well. Ah, these are always the fun bits of these things. It's it's such a small thing, but I think it adds a lot. We could just not have the mask. I mean, you know, it's, it still works. You can still move through uh, the scenery, but it just looks so much better with the mask on. Uh, instead of seeing, like, white pixels suddenly light up behind it. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and let's go back the other way. Hopefully now we won't see masks here. But this mask down here should still work, which it does. Brilliant. Masks look cool. Yeah, they're definitely worth it. They do look good. They do look, definitely look good. Yeah, that's working perfect. Cool. It's like when you go behind like that and you can you can actually see clearly there's something masking it. That's when I think it looks really nice. Okay, so let's work on the, the shooting. So at the moment I can't shoot through because the bullets still see this as solid material. The passable areas is really just done in the collision routine. Um Yeah, so the particles get stopped by the mask. Uh, and and also the bullets get stopped by the mass. So I'm just trying to think of an easy way, um, easy way to to make that not the case that they do work. 
Um, so you can see there at the moment, I can shoot and it would just hit the hit there. And that definitely needs to work because this this area has some enemies in it that move around. So, um, so let's work on the shit particles as well. It's going to be tricky because particles the particle system has to be pretty fast. So let's not worry about the particles for now. That might have to be a compromise. Compromise we have to make. It would be nice if they did flow behind the column, um, but I'm not gonna. I'm not going to lose sleep over it if it doesn't because the the routine is is fairly optimal there because what it's doing is it's checking if the character is zero. Uh, if the character is zero, then uh, it it doesn't display. If I were it, it, then it basically um, it's hit a wall and it stops. If I put a check in here to check for passable areas, I then have to I have to check against these rectangles and that's where it's going to get really really tricky. So I'm not going to worry too much about the particles because that is a slow system and it would be crazy to. Uh... <laughs> well done, you got them all. My God, how many are you up to now in terms of images? Four, four, six, out five, two, six. My God damn it, there's only 80 left. All right, need some more. Please get some more backgrounds. Come up with some series and we'll add them in. We need a new series, yeah. That's taken the entire stream though to do that pretty much. Two and a half hours at least. Or just, just under two and a half hours. You have yeah, you've got one. I, I've definitely got one. Um Well you can you can't trigger it, but you can do you can uh, uncover a random background with your your um um with your with your uh, channel points and hope that you get it but we've been really unlucky with them so far so far we've not hit many series uh, items um it seems to have hit everything else all right let's, let's take a look at this so the the check that's doing this is checking um in the collision routine i believe uh, so let's just go and have a look at the collision routine and see what it's doing. Yeah, see, look, we've got get blocked at position. So we do have a routine which does do the check, uh, but it is checking. Uh, oh, it's checking sprite space here. Uh, and then it's doing these things here. So what's get collision lookup doing? Collision char X and collision char Y. Okay, so that is set in collision char x and char y, uh, and collision lookup. So it's okay. It's, it's creating a screen lookup, and then what is passable areas check doing? So maybe we can we can reduce this down to a, a simplified version. So let me just move passable areas over here. See, check is still big. That's way too much to do in a particle system, but we can probably get away with it for bullets. Four hundred forty-five channel points. Oh, do you know what? I only gave you? I only gave you ten thousand. <laughs> oh my god! Straight away you found one. Oh, interesting. So in this series, there's one that you've discovered already. So. Interesting. I need to go and look what that is now. Uh. Oh, I'm not sure which one of these you've already discovered. Oh, unless SP's probably got it. Ah, there you go. I was going to say SP's got it. Yeah, there you go. I remember now. Yeah, I remember that you were uh, you discovered it. So, so now you need to figure out what the connection is. <laughs> it's not Christmas cats. Okay, so passable areas check is checking collision chart X. 
bed collision char Y. That's all it's checking. So in order to check bullets against that, we need to set those positions. So let's go and have a look at bullets uh, and see if there is something we can do in here. Cannot spawn the bullet in the scenery. Okay. Not that. Although that's... That's going to be interesting as well. So, uh, all right, we'll come to that in a minute. Let's let's find the update bullets. Here we go. Bullet has hit something. Okay, so here is where we do the check. And uh, do we have? a screen position x and y okay so we do have data x and we do have data y they are used Okay, uh, data. Okay, we've got data screen positions as well. Okay, so we've got data X, we've got data Y, but then the check is done here. So this is checking a screen location. But what we should be doing is before we do that, we should check passable areas. But we only need to do this if there are passable areas on the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load passable areas dot data dot next index. Uh, if that's equal to zero, then we skip passable check. Because there's no point in us doing this check if um, if there is no passable areas on this screen. So so this will save us a few cycles in that case. Otherwise, what we need to do is we then need to check our data against this routine here. Uh, now, this routine looks like it bashes the X register, uh, but not the Y register. So, okay. But we need the X register here, unfortunately. So we, whatever we do, we're going to have to store the, the X register somewhere. So I'm going to store that in rest X. And then here it's going to be okay. Let me put a little note up here. So this is why it's going to be tricky to to have random kind of characters like that. So. Okay. Uh, so what do we need to do? Okay, we need to set collision char X and collision char Y. So this is what we need to set, these two values, and they need to come from data X, comma X. Data Y, comma X, and then we can call possible areas check. And if the carry flag is set here, then this is a passable area, in which case we can jump to OK to update. Okay, let's try that. Did that compile? Assemble? It did. Uh, okay, so I think you've worked out what the what the uh, connection is here.
Okay, right. So it's kind of half working, but it's blowing a hole through the. Which is interesting. And also stopping just after one of them for some reason. So there's something quite odd going on. All right. So the reason for it blowing a hole in something is because it's trying to draw a particle where it shouldn't draw a particle. And that's because normally we, if we hit something seen in the scenery, then we don't draw in that position. But now we're asking it to, to actually pass through that area. So we need it to pass through the area, but not draw. Um, so depending on the way we do this, what we can do is we can just have a no draw uh, flag in here. And whenever a bullet is processed, it starts with no draw set to zero. Uh, so that would be in the update up here. Um, we would So we don't draw, so by default, sorry, we do draw. Um, and then if this is true here, if this succeeds, uh, actually we need to restore the X here as well. Okay, so restore the X here. And we'll skip ahead to this instead on the opposite of the thing, like so. And then instead jump to OK to update, which will allow us to then set no draw to true. So we, uh, we just increment uh, no data dot no draw comma x. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with loading it with one just in case there's something weird about that opcode. Uh, okay, so that's the update for the bullets, update bullets. But now what that means is we can we can look through as we go through. We can say, ah, oh, do we actually need to clear here? So we can say load data dot uh, data dot no draw. X. If this is set to uh, in other words, if it's non zero, if it's one or above, then we don't do any clear routine. And when we do the same in the drawer as well. So wherever the drawer happens here, uh, we can say no oh, data, no draw, and otherwise skip. Okay, right. That should, in theory, now not draw them uh, if it's passing through something. Oh, well done, Price. I was I was wondering if anybody was going to get that one. Um, I was wondering if anybody was going to get that one. So I'm, I'm pleased you did. Okay, here we go. Let's try this out. There we go. Perfect. So there's a little bit of a stop as we move through. And the reason for that is because if it thinks you're in in scenery, it won't shoot, uh, which it does at some point. There, there we go. It's not, sh even though I'm pressing fire, it's not shooting there because it thinks we're in scenery, even though we're not. So that's the other one to sort out here. Um, but but cool, this is this is kind of working. 
almost. So, so the only other thing we need to do now is make sure that the bullets uh, can spawn properly. So, um, where was that? Cannot spawn the bullet in the scenery. Okay, so that's what this check is here now. Okay, so we just need to copy that routine as well. So um, it's pretty much the same routine. Uh, I, I feel like this should be a, a jump, but I, I don't want to add the overhead of a function call here. So I might make this a macro. Um, I don't know. Let's have a look. So we need to keep X. Do we need to keep Y? Yes, it looks like we need to keep Y here as well. Y actually isn't used uh, by this routine, so that's fine. Um, we need to skip to that instead. So uh, I'm going to put stupidly but yeah i'm not going to make a macro because this might have to change because that's not going to be in the same place anyway oh no it is going to be in the same place yeah it is going to be in the same place all right okay i think that's going to work Man, this is an interesting, um, in interesting kind of set of kind of algorithms that I've had to do tonight. I'm quite pleased with them. I'll switch over to Resident Evil if this is working. I'll, I'll take a quick break and I'll do some Resident Evil. Okay, so it's moving through fine. Let's try and ah uh, no, see I can still still get to the point where it's not shooting through the scenery. Okay. Oh, and actually and actually taking chunks out of it as well. Okay. Okay. So it's not quite right. Dex is here. Take our data X, take our data Y, store them and check. Check the carry flag. Uh, if it's not passable, you know, it's not in a passable area, come to here. And if we are in a passable area, then we should jump to here. At which point it should spawn. So why is that not spawning? Okay, so I'm going to put an increment here so we can see that that's being called. Yeah, good. I'm quite pleased with the progress tonight. It's been it's been pretty decent. It, it was good that we did the bug clearing uh, on the last one. I think it was the last one or the one before it. There was a lot of bugs cleared, and I think that's kind of made this a bit easier to work with. Okay, so seemingly if I'm in this position here, yeah, see it's not triggering it's not triggering at all that that ball. Oh actually it helps if I'm on the right keys. Yeah, see so yeah, it should be triggering a board. Oh it does and then it removes the, the character here. Um okay interesting so if I move down, yeah. So anytime it starts removing the background, it's it's allowing it to shoot. See, it's allowing me to shoot there, but not there. There, but not there. Okay. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah. So data Y. Oh, comma Y. That's why. Look, comma Y. That's the problem. 
yeah, so it wouldn't wouldn't have worked. It needs to be different here. This combat X is something completely different. Uh, it's to do with screen lookups by lots of things. Oh, Bayonetta, yeah. One of my favorite games that I really do like that game. First one more than more than the second. I don't mind the second one, but the first one's just classic. It's just really good. Platinum Games. I like all of their games, to be honest. Ah, there we go. It's working there. Um, although I haven't played the Metal Gear. I know they did a Metal Gear game. I haven't played that yet. And I've not played very much of Nier Automata or Automata or whatever it's called. I should I should play that at some point. But I do like their style of that that kind of crazy kind of uh, button mashing fighting game sort of thing. They're, they're very, very good at it. And they're, they're good at making really, really epic battles as well. Cool. Uh, okay, I think that's that's working quite well now tonight. Ooh, right, I shall take a five-minute break. When I come back, I'll make myself a fresh vodka. And we'll play a bit of uh, Resident Evil. I think that was uh, pretty good progress tonight. I might as well finish at a, finish at a point, uh, finish at a good point. So, uh, BG Sam Fox Street Poker, good guess, good guess. All right, I shall be back in uh, five minutes, guys. Oh, not even that, really.